Welcome to the Marketing for the Culture podcast, powered by the African American Marketing Association. Each week, we'll bring you an insightful conversation from some of the best experts in our industry on how to advance our career. Join the collective of Black marketers across the world, advancing their brand as we work towards creating a collaborative community. Hey, good people. Welcome back to the Marketing for the Culture podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Gomez. And today's special guest is Nadia Sharice. I had the pleasure of meeting this beautiful soul in the month of May. She attended... <laughs> She attended the Marketing for the Culture Summit, and it's been a pleasure watching her work over the past couple of months. So I was like, hey, she needs to be on the podcast. And here she is. Nadia, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm feeling so freaking amazing. And thank you. And no, the pleasure is all mine. First of all, you put together an amazing, amazing event just for Black marketers. And I don't know if this is a little promo, but if you did not go last year, you better catch yourself this year because I am definitely going. It was so worth it. The connections, the energy, it felt like family, first of its kind, for sure. Oh, man, so, yeah. that's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into that <laughs> event. So thank you for that compliment. Uh, so I said all of these things. You are the CEO of Low Key Communications. Mm -hmm. So why don't you tell the people um, just your overall background and what you do today? Awesome. So I'm going to try to be like Guy. I watched your last interview with Guy. It was so amazing, by the way. He is phenomenal. Like, hands down, I want to be just like him when I grow up, like tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so I, the reason why I'm mentioning Guy, because Guy got on his interview, and he's like, yeah, I went from Apple to Canva, and that's how I got here. And it was just like so straight to the point. It was so funny. But um, I got a little bit of a longer story. Um, everything that happened in my journey literally is how I got to where I am today, which is uh, being, being a holistic marketer. So um, my story starts back, I, le I left college. I'm actually repping my alma mater today. Like literally, this is my vacation shirt. This is the shirt I travel in, do all my interviews in. I just like, I, I really do give a lot of props to my HBCU. Which is? Um, Florida Agricultural and Mechanical University. <laughs> right. FAMU for the listeners. Okay. <laughs> yes, FAMU. So um, anybody who knows the Rattlers know we definitely brag different. But um, left college, moved to Atlanta. I had, I was blessed with the opportunity to uh, graduate with two contracts in my hand. I had worked my behind off in school, um, doing everything, involving myself. And um, I'm saying this because I want, I'm going to share this with my alma mater and the kids that are in the School of Journalism and Graphic Communication. I'm going to share this with them and I want them to know hard work does pay off. Left school with an opportunity in Orlando, Florida or Atlanta. I ran to Atlanta because I had family and it was Atlanta. Who doesn't want to be in Atlanta, right? Um, and I got the opportunity to work for like literally y'all, one of the top black marketing and communications agencies in Atlanta beautiful office on the eighth floor, straight in downtown, like right next to the Mercedes Benz. If you know what I'm talking about, you know the area. I mean, gorgeous, gorgeous place. And I've learned, I learned really about the IMC formula. And that's, Michelle, I know you probably know all about IMC. And that's that integrated marketing communication, how to involve PR strategy with marketing, with advertising, because we know marketing changes every Wednesday at three o'clock. So I really learned... <laughs> I really learned about how all of these corporations out here are using IMC. And I got to work with big brands, Coca-Cola, one of them, BET, Black Enterprise, Toyota, ARP, Nielsen.com. I mean, Open Door, like the, the thing about agency is you get so many different types of clients, right? You're not just like in-house. Like I didn't work for Coca-Cola in-house and all I worked on every day was Coca-Cola. I worked agency. So we, I had anything from vehicle to product to data company to, you know, can of soda. I mean, everything. So that also taught me how to change my perspective when it comes to marketing and how you really have to diversify your marketing strategies and test everything. So what I, why I say that is because what worked for one client would never work for the other client, right? And marketing, and, you know, we make fun of marketing all the time, with especially with Instagram. They keep us on our toes. But it does change like that. And I think if if everyone can just get used to really switching plans consistently, you'll really just get used to uh, testing. And that's essentially what marketing is. So um, 
I loved what I, I, I loved working at the agency. I always give them their props, Black woman owned. But the thing that I learned was my business and my wellness had to be aligned. I was not vegan. During this time of me working at this agency for years, um, I ended up losing my grandmother who raised me to colon cancer. Why does this have to do with my career? Well, I don't know about y'all, but I didn't even know what a colon cancer, I didn't even know what the colon was like five years ago. Yeah, I went to school for 12 years and didn't know what that was. So I um, started understanding more about my body and how my physical health actually makes me perform so well to win this new business and do these RFPs and go to these, you know, experiences and put experiences together for people and show up just awesome was because I actually had to be physically awesome. So um, I get really like, I dive deep into like what I've been through, my traumas. Um, I'm Puerto Rican and Jamaican from South Philly. That's all I got to say. I'm traumatized, right? (laughs) I'm spicy and I'm traumatized, right? No, I'm just kidding. But I've been through a lot, you know, we all have, we all have beautiful stories. And I really started getting to know who Nadia was. Like, seriously, I dived into like how I was raised, how the people who raised me, how they were raised, what struggles have we been in all of our lives that we've just become so accustomed to. And we call it normal now. They're not normal though, you know, and all of that, I was bringing all of that to work, y'all, all of that. Like Michelle, I'm telling you every single day, like literally I started getting into journaling really, really heavy during this time and I'm at work and I've got my screen on whatever marketing stuff I had to do for, you know, the day, whatever social media stuff I had sparked the podcast. I literally produced the agency's whole podcast for the first time we ever had a podcast, all this great stuff. And on the other side, I have like literally the lessons that I was like, that I was learning about myself while doing this work. So like it was starting to merge, you guys, my personal and my business was starting to merge. And what I started to realize is that the strategies that I were coming up with, I wanted them to feel holistic. I wanted them to feel so deep and rooted in solutions that literally it would change all of all of the world. Well, I realized that corporate America was holding me back. <laughs> Love corporate America. Corporate America is a blessing for learning structure, organization, terminology, the beast, the work, the, you know, the work environment. But corporate America does not do a good job of getting to the root issues of their consumers. They don't. They don't. And that's why we see these corporations now who are really hiring Black marketers. They're really wanting to diversify their HR and their, I mean, just their whole comms department because they are seeing that we don't know the root issue. So I'm going to hire people who do. And you guys, that, that, I'm not going to lie, there was a couple of, incidences where I just saw how we were being hired as an agency to do work that was surface level. And I was going home and I would start complaining about it. And I just wasn't feeling alive. I went vegan. I started getting healthier. I quit my job. I put a 45 day notice in. My first client after leaving my job paid me $20,000 more than I was making in one year. One client. (laughs) Wow. Love it. Love it. Yeah. So I birthed, I birthed it. I was scared. I was, I was, I opened up a marketing agency. At first I was just a freelancer, to be honest, if I'm just being hundred percent, I was a freelancer. I was scared. I just knew that I didn't want to serve clients that were not healing our community from the root level. It mattered that we talked about mental issues. It mattered that we talked about uh, lack of capital. It mattered why we're, you know, the history of lack of capital. It mattered why we, not just being in the boardroom, but why it mattered moving up and having a voice and standing up for what's right. But like it mattered, it mattered. And so I was blessed to kind of come up with this whole low key communications thing at the spark of Black Lives Matter, at the spark of the pandemic, when people already were looking for healthier solutions. They were already scared of masks and they didn't want to be, they wanted to be six feet apart. And they're just like, the hospitals were full. Like everything was like, it was just, it was explosive and it was exposing. It was explosive and exposing. And what it exposed was corporate America is not well. Yeah. And so in order for you to be well, you got to go home. You got to assess yourself and you got to really look at your strengths and your weaknesses. And and, and we got to start this whole thing over. So You know, no shade to corporate America. I love corporate America. I still work with corporate clients to this day, but my approach is now totally holistic. I let them know from the door, you know, when you hire a holistic marketer 
everything I'm going to advise to you has to be looked at with a magnifying glass. We've got to look at the wellness part of it and not, and I, and I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, what that really means and what that looks like, but yeah, guys, literally low key communications was birthed after me assessing myself and looking like my business, my business and me had to be aligned. I love that journey. So there's so many nuggets with what you said. Um, so just bear with me as we navigate. Um, I guess with social media and technology, do you think marketing is becoming cookie cutter? Mm. Um, because if you think about everything is buying for our attention, right? On the creator as well as the consumer side. And like we have just that much time to get your attention and we do a week or a month of analytics and then we're trying to create another campaign to see what's... So what say you? So <laughs> I do think marketing is becoming cookie cutter. I think more people don't realize, more people aren't really finding what they what they truly want to do. And that's why their marketing is cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. So perfect example, I told you a lot of my experience came from working at this agency. And one of the beautiful things I learned about working at this agency was like being able to switch from building a strategy for a vehicle brand to a, to, you know, like a consumer product brand to maybe a, a data consumer, you know, a you know, you know, agency or whatever that taught me how to switch my mind to fit strategies that fit that corporation and their values. What worked for Coca-Cola didn't work for a data company like Nielsen.com. Right. It didn't work because Coca-Cola is, was rooted in products and experiences. Nielsen is a data company. They're worried about facts, right? They're worried about surveying. They're worrying about what businesses can capitalize off of from having this data. So I do think marketing is becoming cooking cutter. And I think the solution to that is really understanding what, especially entrepreneurs, even if you're, you know, even if your entrepreneurship journey is like as a side hustle right now, you got to figure out what is it you want to do and who you want to serve. And that, that is so cliche. You probably hear it a thousand times, find out who you want to serve, find out what their problem is, find out their pain points. But you guys, some of the oldest, widest, you know, repetitive, you know, tales are the ones that work. You really do have to figure out what is unique about you and why is it, your whole, you, your whole marketing strategy has to be unique to you. What, what the problem is no one knows themselves. So everyone's copying the influencers who are making a million dollars from one funnel. And they're like, oh, well, it worked for them. I'm work for me. Well, that the funnel might work. The system can be the same, but the strategy, the copy, the messaging, totally different totally different that part because in this creator economy i feel like there's a blurred line between the strategist and the technician mm -hmm. and i think maybe seven to ten years ago we could delegate two different things right and now everything's just becoming blurred mainly because you know as you mentioned instagram and even tiktok they want you to create and edit in the app Right. Mm -hmm. And then they increase your visibility, um, which I'm like, I'm a strategist. I want to come up with the game plan and hand it off. I ain't got time to learn this. Thing. Right. 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 And you know what? Marketing is so broad. Oh, my gosh. I was just having this feel, too, because everyone always asks me, well, well, what's holistic marketing? Is that like a does that mean you, you know, you you do vegan social media? And I'm like, not at all. <laughs> so. I, I, I think I think there's so many roles with marketing. I know there's um, I think markethire.com does a very good job of like really telling people what the role is and what their responsibility is. But there's about I mean, just off the top of my head, a marketing strategist is not the same thing as a digital marketer. And you got to be even specific about what kind of digital marketer, because there's a difference between a digital marketer and then a social media manager. You know, even though it's all in the digital space, there are certain roles that do certain things, right? And then you've got a marketing manager who like manages the actual account. That's still like, you know, kind of like the account manager, director role a little bit. But there's just so many different terminologies. Yeah, and it, it, poor, poor entrepreneurs, they probably just hire somebody off of Fiverr that does marketing and they think they're gonna get everything. But don't do that. Um, really start to understand who you're hiring. But um, yeah, the, and you know what's so funny? It's so crazy because I, I, I wanted to make sure that specifically I define what holistic marketing is on this interview 
because I know that this one is going to be watched by other black marketers, but it's also going to be watched by people who are trying to hire black marketers, right? Because they're studying your organization because it's the first of its kind. So holistic marketing is a is an idea. It's a it's a choice. It's a choice. Marketing is the career. Marketing is the profession. Holistic is the choice. The choice you make to look at all parts of your business and make sure that they all align with each other. So the way we hire has everything to do with our values and why we hire. The way we market has everything to do with why we're serving, why we started this business, who we even partner with. Like we're not just partnering with people from Fiverr every single day. We're really trying to be intentional to make sure we hire Black graphic designers, Spanish uh, copywriters, you know, Asian, you know, whatever, video editors. We're really intentional about making it multicultural, right? So the intentional part of it is what makes it holistic. I love the word holistic because it's spelled with two different ways. There's an H-O-L way, like holistic. That's typically what everybody sees when they think of the word holistic. And then there's a W-H-O-L way. And the W-H-O-L way is my favorite because it stems from the root whole. Mm -hmm. And whole is 365. It's a symbol of completion. The earth is whole, right? You have a whole year. You don't finish a year until you get to the top, you know, all the way to the bottom. So the reason I love the word whole is because businesses only look at their sales department. (laughs) so you only focus on one part of your body or one part of your business you're only going to fix one part so you're still going to have a and i'm going to break it down like even in the wellness side right you have a whole body what makes a person whole they have a mind they have a body and they have a spirit they have a they have a they have a emotion a character about them that makes them whole just because we have bodies doesn't make us you know a a full experience we're not a, a full human experience we have to have all three So if you only fix your diet, you're still crazy and you're still emotionally all over the place, you know, emotionally red, right? But if you fix all three, then I might want to take you out on Saturday to go dance to some Afro beats, right? Same thing with your business. If you only make money, right, you'll probably make money by just focusing on sales. That's great. Money is going to bring you freedom, right? Freedom of what? But making money doesn't mean that your customers are satisfied that you actually gave them a product that was going to fix their life, not their one-time, you know, their one-time solution, fix their life. You probably are hiring people that actually are designed to work with you because you're not looking at your business as a whole. You're not looking at how it affects the community, how it affects, you know, the, the financial ecosystem, how it affects, you know, the culture, you know, who you hire. I mean, it's a, it's, Who you hang out with, uh, you know, talks about like who you are, right? It represents who you are. Who you hire does the same thing, guys. (laughs) So that's why corporate America was like, you know, during the Black Lives Matter thing, just two years ago, everyone was looking at their, going on their websites and they're like, let me see who's on their senior level. Oh, I only see one of us. Mm -mm, That's a bad sign because it represents the business. Represents the business. So holistic marketing is the choice to look at your business as all of the departments are all marketing. Your HR is marketing, your vendors are are, are marketing because all of that is speaking to your consumer. So we just, it's, I just want to make sure I, I really define and break that down. That holistic marketing is truly looking at all the departments of your business, all the all your missions are all flowing in alignment with every department, so that literally you're not just making a change externally with your consumers, but also internally with your business, and that's how you really get longevity. Yeah. So. I love everything that you're saying because I speak on a lot of similar things you mentioned when it comes to diversity marketing. And I feel like marketers have the hardest jobs right now. And organizations are going to have to expand the marketing department because everything is marketing, right? Mm -hmm. And going back to what you said, it's just not about sales anymore. You know, now we have product marketing. I think um, because of Black Lives Matter, there's going to be a stronger emphasis on recruitment marketing, right? How are you marketing yourself to get candidates, diverse candidates into your organization? Mm -hmm. And I think companies are going to have to find, um, I pretty much say they have to put more emphasis on just overall thought leadership and not just sales, because what are you doing to make yourself different on a consumer level, a candidate level, 
a competitor yeah. left. <laughs> and and let me tell you, if you stutter, if you study consumers now, that's why I love, like I always tell people just really go get some free data from Nielsen.com, N-I-E-L-S-E-N. It's literally an agency out here in New York that literally studies all consumers, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, all consumers, what they, and and consumption is not just what you're eating or watching, but also what you're listening to, how you're buying, when you're buying, when when you're watching. So I would really just study the numbers. Numbers don't lie, right? But a part of what people don't understand is that when you market better internally, it actually is a part of your sales strategy. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So that's why you'll see a lot of corporations have like a lifestyle Instagram. Right. Or their Facebook is all about like the life inside of Nielsen or the Mm -hmm. life inside of Coca-Cola. Like they'll have all all these pages is pages because they're not just selling the experience of the can. They're selling the experience of what it's like making the can, being part of the family, you know, understanding the movement, you know, you know, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like really getting getting, uh, you know, getting down on diversity is really actually a great sales strategy. Yeah, it's it's going to be interesting how the next three to five years shape. Oh, yeah. Itself when it comes to just overall diversity marketing, um, oh, yeah. I do think companies are trying to become deeper. Um, but I think they kind of fall as time goes on, they fall back to their old mm-hmm. way. Yeah, they do. And you know what that, you know, and, you know, I, I hope that we talk about this, but, um, you know, I hope that one of the trends and it's actually trending now, wellness is trending. It's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's completely trending. You've got ERGs in corporate America who are hiring yoga specialists to come into their, into their lunch rooms and literally like give yoga, you know, sessions in the middle of the day. So wellness is a trend. Vegan is a trend, but let's take it from just like the the, you know, the eating or the physical um, perspective of wellness. Let's look at wellness as like an entire movement, right? And a movement, not just to incorporate and invite wellness people to come in, but also invite your employees and your leaders to assess themselves, do a wellness assess. So the same formula that we use in marketing, it's called the SWOT analysis. It really analyzes the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of a business, right? I talk, this is one of the strategies I've been using. I mean, I'm probably at like seven years of using the same thing. Before any client we do, you know, before we touch them, the discovery call is all about strength. It's all about SWOT. So I tell people, you know, leadership comes from assessment. Leadership comes from looking at your own SWOT, your individual SWOT analysis, and seeing where you could become better in your leadership. And that is truly how you will attract diversity or just wellness, period. That's how you, I mean, everything aligns with, everything's an energy, you know? So when, a, you can always tell when a corporate corporation or a business doesn't really understand their consumers that they're trying to market to, right? You can always tell because one, they haven't admitted that they suck <laughs> at culture. Just admit it. Just start there. Just start with saying, I know, here's a great sentence you can copy and paste into your mouth. I know nothing about your culture, but I'm so open to learning it, learning about it. And I'm truly going to be a student. You, I know, you know, I might be your boss today. I might be your supervisor, but I'm truly open to understanding what it's like working with you. And not just like the guilt trip thing, like, you know, you know, I could go on and on and on about like, you know, aggression in the office place and all that stuff. I'm not talking about like the guilt trip stuff. I'm talking about like just truly studying people's culture and like where their problems are in real solutions. When you as a leader embody that, you become a ambassador of that. Right. That is an energy that speaks for itself. You don't have to put it on your resume. People on Zoom calls will know that you are generally trying to build solutions to hire diverse, you know, to diversify your hiring, to diversify who you're targeting, you know, everything's going to like exude out of the fact that you admitted and assessed yourself first. So I'm, I'm, I'm all about like, you know, wellness, internal and, you know, internal wellness, and external wellness, start there, start there. Absolutely. Yeah. You did a video recently um, (laughs) and I'm bringing this up because I struggle with it. Um, but basically you said everything in life is content, right? 
I have yeah. a love relationship with social media. Um, but yeah, so how can people lean in when it comes to creating content um, centered around their life? Mm. Mm. So first you have to stop. And this is, I don't, I think this trend is something that worked in the nineties and it worked for the generation that birthed my millennial generation um, or our millennial generation. I think this ideology that business and personal are separate things. And I think that happened at a time where, you know, African-Americans truly had to work their behinds off to be in office and then move up in office. And they didn't want to jeopardize anything from their personal life for that job. They didn't want anything. They didn't want, you know, if you had, you know, a divorce going on, or if you had someone die or pass away, or if you had any trauma in your life or anything that was just like too personal, even about your other business ventures, you never wanted to post about, talk about, it was so like um, conservative. Well, 2022, <laughs> consumers have let us know, the people have let us know, and this is truly, I, I, I want to give thanks to the Gen Xers and the millennials, because we truly drove this. It started in the 90s. We just didn't really realize that it was going to have this impact. It really started in the 90s. But you start to see that the roles in our society change. You start to see conversations in the office change. You start to see people talking about money. You start uh, teaching teaching people how to get money. You started like really expanding and being able to show all parts of you, right? And the more that you show all parts of you, the more you create this thing called a personal brand. And the more you realize that the more personality you have, the more people could care less about the product. They loved to support you, right? So, I mean, and, and think about like, even in the civil rights movement, why I'm, I'm just using this as, a, as one example, but like when you think about Martin Luther King, when you think about our leaders in the civil rights movement, it, it wasn't that you were in love with civil rights. You were in love with the people, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, MLK, you were in love with the people. So what corporations have started learning as well is that if they make their brand more personable, more people will look to their products as something that they can also imitate. So the thing about showing up as your authentic self, this all comes from the word inspiration. The, the most impactful, powerful thing that we can do to each other as humans is inspire. Nipsey Hussle says it all the time in all his interviews. I mean, all the greats talk about inspiration, value. This whole value thing comes about because you want to essentially show yourself as a possibility to somebody else who's not there yet. So when people are scared to show up authentically on social media, it tells me that either one, they don't see their worth yet. They haven't seen the capabilities of what they could become because they haven't seen mentorship, right? They haven't really seen the effects or they're just scared of the camera. They're just like, no, you know, my gap tooth was gapping today. My hair is not done and the lashes are, you know, I mean, they're just, it's probably like a physical insecurity thing, right? But what they're, what they're not doing is they're not using their, human gift, which is to inspire. So whatever level you're at, don't get, don't get all consumed into like the number of views. I go viral on Wednesday. And then by Thursday, I'm back at like two views. I don't focus on that because one, it still makes me money. Two, I know that somebody who needs to see it was getting inspired. So that's like the, the, the fluffy part of like why you should totally show up as yourself. And I wanted to give some back history. The other part of showing yourself, showing up authentically is, especially for those entrepreneurs, you got to understand that corporations learn from us. We, the whole term influencer marketing came from the word inspiration. It comes from influence, being of influence, inspiring, right? Those words, these words that we're using all the time are so much more powerful than we really, really notice. Influencer is basically a person who's inspiring you to buy something right? <laughs> or to use something or to think about something. They're becoming influencers. And now you're being rewarded for being influencer. You're getting paid, you know, brand partnerships, you're getting a blue check. Okay. You're getting sponsored and flewed out. Okay. <laughs> so, so what's so beautiful about it is now corporations are rewarding you for being you. So follow the money guys, like literally don't overthink about like, oh, I get people all the time. Nadia, I want two different Instagrams. I want one for my business. And I want one for my personal. And I have to really get them into the mindset to say, you're no longer separate. That's not even holistic. That's like saying, you know, 
I, I my brain is actually over there in the kitchen thinking of actually no, it's actually cooking in the kitchen. But I'm right here physically on this interview with the African American Marketing Association president. That's not possible. I'm a I'm a whole person. So wherever I go, you know, <laughs> it's all of me. It's all or nothing. So you got to start also just being comfortable with being all or nothing. And then let me tell you the effect of the effect is that when you do get clients, when you do, when you are, you know, uh, uh, maybe you're on LinkedIn uh, looking for jobs, when you show up as all the way you, you are only going to attract people who are going to want to work with all of that. Not, a, not 75, not a quarter of it. So for my people who are still working in corporate America, when you show up authentically as yourself on your LinkedIn, on your Facebook, you're letting your recruiter know I'm totally professional, but culture and who I am and what I come with is important. <laughs> for those who have clients as well. You're telling your clients, listen, this is how I run my business. I'm going to get you your needs done. I'm going to do all my deliverables, but this is who I am. And I'm telling you guys, the effect is the effect is amazing. So do you feel like there's a balance? Like I believe everyone is multifaceted, right? So do you think there has to be a balance? Because um, one thing I always say, like everyone knows me as a professional, right? But I think I'm pretty funny. I think I'm conversational funny, right? <laughs> but there is no way I have the creative juices to, um, one, create a skit, two, turn on the camera and make a fool of myself, right? So where's the balance between the education, the entertainment, opinions? Everyone, Everyone's an expert when it comes to relationships, right? <laughs> So where's the balance with all of this? Because, you know, going back to what you said, kind of paraphrasing, um, a couple of years ago, it was kind of like, you know, what's your subject matter expertise? You know, what's your niche? And now we show up as our whole self. Right. So that's a that's a good point. That's a really, really good point. A great question. I think um <laughs> Everything always goes back to the root problem of like people not knowing themselves, essentially. But I think you do still need an expertise. Right. But there's only one there's only one you. Right. So you and I are both marketers. Right. But we know we both have two different specialties. You know, we'll both be at the, you know, AAMA, you know, summit next year. But we'll probably both be there for the same reasons. But we'll leave with, you know, different perspectives and we'll, we'll be incorporating in our business differently. I think the balance, man, the balance comes from like, you have to do the self work in order for you to teach something differently. So a lot of people are looking at, you know, so it's, it's almost like that, that, you know, I just, I just heard this new, um, this new terminology, like there's two seasons in business, there's information and there's execution, right? We get so consumed with like following the, all the right people, getting all the information, studying the way they do free webinars, studying the way they do their expos, studying the way their strategy works. We study, 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 study that we actually don't, that we have studied so much that we are like imitating them. <laughs> we have to like know when to stop reading a book and actually implement it in our version. So you are the author of your social media. You're the author of your life. You're the author of your book. You're the author of your, your history that you haven't even created yet. You have really got to set, you really got to know yourself in order to know what's so unique about you. So like with me, I'm super holistic. I'm always going to talk about wellness. I live well. I'm outside during a freaking interview. You probably hear Pocahontas in the background during, you know, in the wind or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm, I'm super natural with it, right? But that's because I know my value. I... Believe it or not, I got anxious before this interview. Even though I love you, Michelle, there's nothing scary about you, Michelle. You're so open and welcoming. But I just know that I want to make sure people get value when every time I open my mouth and I know when it's recorded, it like it like terrifies me a little bit. And then I got family in the house screaming and I'm like, what if they can't hear me? You know, so I naturally get nervous. So I know myself, what calms me? Outdoors. So my content, outdoors. My sales funnel videos, outdoors. I've done interviews with clients. I've done discovery calls with clients. I've done I've, I've done podcast interviews with clients outside, outside. So the information that I teach today may have been something you've heard before, but I'm doing it outside and that's my way. 
So if nothing else, you've learned to be yourself, to show up with your natural hair. You know what I'm saying? Like you really got to understand and know your values. That's where the balance comes from. People aren't sitting and having enough alone time. We are, when we're alone, and, and if you think about it, people are alone and they have their phones. You're still not alone. You're watching somebody. Spend some alone time. Get to know who you are, guys. Your work, your work shows up better. I had a client from, and she now is like um, a director at PT. But before she used to work at Nielsen, she messaged me on Instagram the other day. And she, and how we met was through a previous job of mine. And she let me know, Nadia, I want to let you know the reason why your agency won that business was because of you. I never told you this. She said, but I just love how you show up as yourself. Like, I don't have to guess what it's like to go out for drinks with you because you show up like that. You know, of course, I'm not up there cussing. It's working in the, in the you know, you know, it, there's some etiquette, but I'm me. I'm, I'm totally me. When I don't know something, I say I don't know. I never lie. I never try to, you know, sell something that's not me. So the balance is truly self-discovery. You've got to spend some more time with yourselves, guys. No matter where you are in your career, if you own your business or not, you guys study yourselves, get to know who you want to be and where you are. Like that's where the true balance comes in. That's when the camera, you don't care about the camera anymore because you're just exuberating with confidence, you know? So I hope you, I hope, I hope that answered. That was a, that was a hard question. <laughs> Cause I really had that like, I really had to think about that. Like, nah, it, it's bad. The balance is you, you know? Mm. No, I love your answer. I think, um, I think for me, I definitely need to put video as a priority, right? Yeah. I think for me, it's more of just priority in business um, and making the most of it. Uh, I've been talking about content since 2014, but clearly video has, you know, exploded. So it's just like the different beast. Um, But it's interesting because I've done surveys and people are like, you should do a vlog. And I'm like, I'm not doing nothing. Like I'm in my room. <laughs> I'm in my room recording a podcast and I don't feel compelled to turn on the camera for every little thing I do. And I think mm. like, that's the disconnect um, I struggle with, but then there's that great moment. It's like, Oh, dang, that was, <laughs> that could that have was been. so good. Right. Yep. So, so right. And, and, and I think for you, Michelle, and I just want to like give you your props real quick, because this is what I would do if I was in the room with you. You have got to understand that there are probably 1% of black females who have started a organization for other black and brown male and female people, just like them. There's probably 1%. You are naturally just by being in the position that you have, just by having this podcast, you are literally an inspiration for thousands. For thousands. We don't even need to go into your background. I don't know if you're from a big town, a small town. I don't know if you're even from Texas. I don't know where you, I don't need to know where you are. Just by you showing up right here, you're already an inspiration. If you think of every single time that you don't turn on your camera, if you think about the little girl that, that before Michelle got here, because some job or some recommendation got Michelle here. Michelle feels confident enough to start her own organization to, you know, think about how the impact of this would really change marketing for corporate America, for businesses forever. There was a small, timid Michelle before this. So every time that you don't turn on your camera, that Michelle suffers. And there's probably 10,000 little Michelles like that. But the big Michelle has to just put the camera on, even if you don't even use the content immediately. Because I think that's another thing that scares people about content. They think it has to instantaneously be posted. What is my caption? But wait, I didn't eat yet. And my DoorDash is late. And and I need a refund. And my Amazon is outside. Like, everything doesn't have to happen right now. Calm down. (laughs) Record it. Because at some point, it's going to be evergreen. What we're saying on this podcast today is still going to be effective in five years somebody in college who's not even all the way done with college this is going to be useful when she graduates yeah so your camera you know your camera cooperation is not about you people have got to take the selfishness out of video it's not about selfie and i think that's what it is everyone's like well i'm not really into myself 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 and i'm like it has nothing to do with it it has nothing to do with it it has everything to do with the impact of the video 
the lifespan of the video, where it's going to be, you know, where it's, where it's going to really blossom and who is it going to blossom for. And then it's social proof. Like, you, you know, you got to show people that you're doing, you're active, you know, and that's what video, it kind of intimidates people. It's like, people are really great networkers, but they don't show, it is kind of, it is kind of awkward. Like, I'm not going to sit here in front. Like, if I wanted to show somebody I was emotional, I got to turn my camera on and cry. Like, what? That's like, I don't even want to cry anymore, right? <laughs> but it's social proof. Mm-hmm. It's social proof. It is. It, it it does. People have to, people are addicted to seeing things. And And as television evolves, content will evolve. TV is literally leading us. That's true. I feel like this is the most gentle beat up on my show ever. So I'm not, it's already recording. So if I start crying, it is what it is. Like, oh no. <laughs> that's because I love you. I love you. That's why I love you. It's not good. I mean, that's the thing though. We do need these reminders, right? Whether you're just starting or if you're a vet. Um, so I got to ask this because I think this is dynamic. I feel like you were getting into it earlier, but I, I just want to be direct with the question. Um, Go for it. So what is the MBS formula? Mm, yeah. So um, I invested in my business like I'm almost like I think a year ago. We've been coining, we've been coining this like MSB formula thing. And this is just a way for people to figure out how you can truly serve somebody else. And when you, when everyone thinks about like, this is really for entrepreneurs, I will say this, this is, and and you could probably use it for, you know, your job as well. This is probably for both actually, I think that back, but, but how it came about was really for entrepreneurs. When entrepreneurs were looking for an offer or a product or service that was just going to be the number one solution forever, because everyone wants to make their business like Amazon, right? So when you're thinking about that, and this is what Amazon probably did too, they just didn't call it MSB. You got to look at holistically where are where is your employer or where is your consumer at? Where are they at holistically? And you ask yourselves, three questions and you break it down in three ways. And that's what the MSB formula is. It stands for mind M body B and spirit S. Oh gosh. Don't say spirit in corporate America. They're going to think you're, they're going to think you, you know, (laughs) you know, they're going to think you have the prince and the frog frog doing some witchery, but the spirit is really the emotion of us. It's really, it's really what moves us. So you want to ask yourself this question when you're coming up with this offer, you want to you want to think about your consumer from an MSB perspective. So mentally, where is your audience? Mentally, where's your employer? So I'm going to I'm going to break it up in two ways. So your audience, mentally where are they at? What do they think about? What's keeping them up at night? Like that's the mind, but you also want to go deeper too. So like what do they tell themselves? How do they talk to themselves, right? And then also what do they think people think about them? Why is all this important? Because you need to get so deep into their root that way you can come up with an offer that solves all of that, right? But you, if you don't know these questions, if you don't ask these questions, you're really going to be surface level with your product and you may make 100,000, but you're never going to be a billionaire. You know, if you really want to make money, you've got to get to the root. It's got to be a lifetime, a lifetime solution. So for employers, for people who are like trying to go and get a job uh, or employees, I should say, you want to figure out where your employer is mentally. Where's the corporation mentally? Like, how do they think about your position, right? When they think about your position, does it stress them out or does it like bring them ease? Because your job is to be the solution to this mental issue, this mental pain point. So body, physical, well, why does why does this have to, anything to do with marketing? Well, physically, your presence or your product should bring them wellness. It should make them feel good. If it's not, you are a liability. You're not an asset. So like my kids, the liability was pushing them out. <laughs> but the asset is that I will cultivate them to be humanitarians and leaders and money makers so that they will essentially keep the legacy going. So for business, you want to figure out physically it, where where are your consumers in their health journey? And this works so well for my wellness brands. So my yoga instructors, even my farmers, chiropractors, uh, my... my um, herbalist, my vegan influencers, like all those in the holistic space, this works so good because you usually have a product that's going to heal their physical illness. For your employer too, find out what your employee employer's physical schedule is outside of their job. And does your 
your presence in the in this department does is it does it help them in and outside of the office as well right so this is where like do they have a family right are they busy are they do they work out you know do they bring their their troubles from work to the office why do you care about that because again your job is to make sure that you're not just bringing the job but you're also bringing a presence that's memorable right so that's how you move up to you you, you make people remember you so the last thing is spirit how are they emotionally? What fears are they telling themselves? What fears have they believed? What fears have their, their generation believed? Their mom believed, their dad, the people who raised them believe because that's engraved into your brain, right? And how can what you have get rid of those fears? Because mental blockage is really the only reason why people don't do things. It's That's it. It's our mind. Our bodies, I mean, literally, you know, I'm a, I'm a thicker woman and I promise you the things I've done with my body once I removed my blockage have been crazy. I mean, to all types of stresses, I've reversed all types of illnesses. Seriously, it's really just the mind. So ask, ask yourselves these questions or ask your consumer these questions as well. And ask yourself this question too. It's a great way to do an assessment. But this is how you truly find a product or a service that is going to last for a long time. It's literally getting to the root problem of every single person that buys from you. And your employer the same way. I didn't even think about using it in an employee-employer uh, perspective either. But really understanding when you come to an interview, you are not just trying to convince them that you do one thing so great. You're really trying to convince them that I fit holistically into your company, not just in this one department with this one job, with this one salary. I fit your brand's message, your brand's identity. I fit your whole entire culture. So you got to really understand like mentally, physically, and spiritually what you're coming to the door with. Hope that answers well. <laughs> I need some horns. I need some <laughs> EJ Clue horns. Some, yes. Um, it's so layered. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm creating. I'm not going to get into details, but I am creating a new product, and you just have me evaluate my whole product. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Um. Look, we cover so much, but yeah. is there anything else that you just, you know, emphasize with your clients and your content that you think the listeners need to know? Yeah. Um, well, I want to I want to just repeat that wellness is a trend. Wellness is the trend for a reason. Um, I don't know, you know, if, you know, you're really into or even your listeners will really be into astrology, but really understanding how our planets are affecting us. Oh my gosh. I've, I had an astrologer client. That's what, that's the beauty about this wellness space. You are like going to like wellness university all over again. Um, I've, I've graduated from YouTube university and now I'm in wellness university, but like all my clients teach me something. They, their, their, their struggle is always marketing and figuring out how to integrate all that they do and really heal people and show and solve people's problems like from the ground up. Right. And my problem is like, I didn't even know this stuff existed. <laughs> so I'm saying wellness is a trend because right now, one of my astrologer clients taught me that we're in the age of the Aquarius and the Aquarius sign is the most intellectual sign in all of the zodiacs. That's me. But the reason why the Aquarius energy is, is really having an impact on everyone is because it started in t at the end of 2019. Mm. And if we think about how much this world has changed since that COVID hit, you would be like, oh my gosh, everyone is getting more intellectual. Everyone, everyone. That's why we had to have corporations expand themselves. Everyone's like literally trying to diversify within. So I want to tell people, the thing I want to remind people is that just Stick to wellness in whatever you're doing. You don't have to be vegan to be well. You don't have to be a yoga instructor to be well. You don't even have to have a wellness business to be well. Operate from a standpoint of wellness. Operate from wherever I go, whoever I serve. I am trying to come with all of me, healing constantly so that we can heal others constantly. You're not going to be able to solve, solve problems and make a lot of money if you're not well yourself. And so that's physically, mentally, and spiritually. I also want to remind people that this is the time to make sure that you actually are designed to do what the hell you're doing every single day. So it doesn't matter 
if you have a degree anymore. Unfortunately, it ma- unfortunately, like you, you know, I'm glad you got the experience from getting the degree. I did too. I'm wearing my alma mater shirt. But what's most important is that you learn about yourself so that you can literally wake up every single day and forget that it's work. That's the real sauce. That's the real bag. I made more money when I got into the wellness space because I, I, I figured out what I truly wanted, what I truly wanted. So, and you hear that all the time from people like when you're, pa- you know, when you're, Pain becomes your purpose and your passion makes you your profit, all this good stuff. But like, that is truly what it is. So take more time, figure out what makes you well, and you better make sure that the job that you're at makes you well. You better make sure that the business that you started makes you well. All of that is important because if not, you're going to be unaligned and you're going to be unfulfilled. So that's like my tip, my tidbit to anyone who's ever going to listen to this podcast. Like guys, just get, find who you are, find you know what I'm saying? Like really self-discovery, get to know all about you. So that whatever you sell, wherever you show up, it literally feels energetic. It feels like it's working. It feels like you're the solution. No matter what room I walk into, people always remember me. They may not know my name, my last name. They may not remember what I do, but they remember how I make them feel because I absolutely love what I do every single day. Even when Instagram has an update every Wednesday at seven o'clock and I have to learn it and teach everybody about it. <clears throat> But I love what I do because I love who I do it for and I love yeah. why I'm doing it. I love why I'm doing it. So that's holistic marketing. Holistic is a choice. It's a choice. You decide. Mm. You decide. And how can people get in touch with you? Oh, man. Instagram is my favorite. I keep talking about Instagram all the time. Instagram is my favorite. Um, our business is called Low Key Communications. My, my IG name is Low Key Nadia. Put an underscore in the beginning and the end and you'll find me. Or you could just look up number one holistic marketer. I'm there on Instagram. We love Instagram. I'm not going to lie. We probably teach people how to make money on Instagram all the time. So that's probably why it's my favorite. Loki Communications, LokiNadia.com. We're pretty much Loki Nadia everywhere. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm at, you guys. I'm, I'm a regular human being. Don't be scared to holler at me right under my comments, you know, under my content. I really do write back, um, you know. I really make relationships. I want people to really like meet me in person. If you visit Atlanta, I'll take you to the gathering spot. <laughs> DM me and say and say that, you know, I heard you take me to the gathering spot, but I DM you. Oh gosh, what did I just do? All right. Well, <laughs> well, there you have it. Right. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm I mean, this is exactly why I am in real life for real. Um, so you know, reach out to me, please. Let's 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 schedule a Zoom call. Let's talk about your business. Let's integrate you, let's make you well. I love it. I love it. Oh man. Thank you. Thank you for welcome. providing such a beautiful conversation. Yay. Uh, thank, thank you, you for hosting this. You uh giving you your flowers before you leave because I did I did squeeze little jabs in there before. But you you, Michelle Farrell, all jokes aside, like I I had such an amazing time at that summit and it really I really watched you. Like I really did. I really watched you because I, 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 I want to be you, you know, and I don't know. I don't know if you've ever heard anybody say that, but girlfriend, <laughs> seriously, like the way, the impact that you have with this, I want to be involved. I want you to make me accountable in your organization. Like if you need help this year, I'm saying it on the recording for a reason. I want to be that for you because I know the power of this. I remember going to school and wishing that there was an organization like this. I remember those days. I remember when I didn't even know what a holistic partner was and now I'm operating in, you know, six, seven figures. Like I'm, I'm just happy that somebody thought of it and actually executed. So kudos to you, girlfriend. You are, you're a rock star. You truly are. You're a rock star. Keep going. I love this. And join AAMA guys. Okay. Seriously, get to know, get to know like-minded individuals. This is, this is where masterminding happens right here in organizations like this. So yeah, kudos to you. I'm done. (laughs) (laughs) thank you thank you thank you listeners um you know what it is make sure you follow us on social instagram uh like us subscribe on youtube (laughs) all that good stuff as always thanks for listening to marketing for the culture i believe in you Thank you for listening to Marketing for the Culture podcast. If you haven't already, please subscribe, whether it's on Apple, Google, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. And of course, our videos are on YouTube. If you have a moment, feel free to give us a rate, review, or just comment. 
We appreciate our sponsors for their continuous support. Also, if you're interested in learning more about our sponsors or becoming a member of the African American Marketing Association, visit aa-ma.org.